Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV. Just hilarious. Charlamagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, indeed. Podcaster, preacher, author, ladies and gentlemen, Tim Ross. Welcome. My man. Good to see y'all. Good How you morning. Feeling? Good morning. Chilling, man. Ross. Chilling. Good to be here with y'all. Yes. Absolutely. The name of the book is Welcome to the Basement, an Upside Down Guide to Greatness, man. Talk to us about that title. Yeah, so um, the basement came from this vision I had when I was 30 years old. Mm -hmm. The nutshell is that um, everybody thinks that the the way to success is up, but I found that the way to success is down. So um, since the Bible is the most upside down book that's ever been written, Mm. um, uh, we realized that, you know, the way up is actually down, the way in is out the way to live is to die, the way to get is to give. So just giving people that countercultural idea of what it is to really press B and go down to the basement. Mm-hmm. I heard you speak about uh, the Bible and how you feel like people are so judgy, Yo. but don't necessarily understand and and realize the judginess that we are, those are some of the people that we were, are discussing in the Bible. Yeah, for so sure. Break that down a little bit. Yeah. so. Um, what I love about the Bible is that the Bible has zero chill in the way that it pins the people that were in it, right? Like Abraham has faith Mm -hmm. and he's a liar. Like Moses is a great prophet and he's a murderer, right? David is uh, a man after God's own heart and he had his homie killed and impregnated his wife. So like the writers of the Bible have no chill Mm -hmm. in like chronicling who these people are And I just feel like as a body, as a church, if we were as honest as the Bible that we read, people could find themselves in the story. Mm -hmm. I think it gets crazy when you get to Sunday and the preacher is trying to act like he's not as fallible as the people that we're reading about Mm -hmm. in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting, though, right? Because, you know, you're born without sin, right? We're born in sin. Even as a child? Oh, absolutely. I mean, think about it. When it when a baby is born. You don't have to teach that joker how to lie. Like, that nigga comes in lying. <laughs> yeah, but really because they don't sort of know any better. But if you instill, what I'm saying, basically, if you instill a lot of these things into children early, early on, yeah, can't they possibly not make any of those mistakes that we just talked about? Can they possibly know lying is wrong? Right. Damn sure, I ain't never killed nobody. You right, know? yeah, for I sure, mean, for sure, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, so yeah. can't you keep them from making those mistakes and being those kind of people? Oh, absolutely. Okay. But but again, we're talking about the nature of a person mm-hmm. when they're born, mm-hmm. and this is why in the in scripture we talk about being born again. We are born into sin. We are born in. We are born again into salvation or into righteousness. Mm-hmm. We're made righteous by the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross. So for me, it's not a matter of like. Um, you know, babies being murderers is just the fact that they're born into a state that is called sin. Gotcha. Yeah, well, they they learn this, right? It's learned behavior, right? That's like, absolutely correct. So, like my daughter, uh, who's two years old, uh, says her tummy hurts mm-hmm. and she wants uh, a snack, mm-hmm. a candy, roaches, whatever it may be, because mm-hmm. when she watches TV, she sees, sees the kids are sick on TV and they ask, "Mom, can I have something to make me feel better?" Mm-hmm. So she follows that. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. she's lying, not saying her stomach hurts, but her stomach can't hurt every day. Right, you know, right, right. Exactly. As soon as she gets she that candy, candy, she's okay. Yeah. Yep, yep, so yep. I, I do get that. Yeah. But I do have a, a, a question, right? So I was, um, it's funny, I was getting a haircut last night and I was talking to my barber and I was like, "Yeah, Tim Ross would be joining." He was like, "Oh, I love Tim Ross." He started talking about uh, the basement and, and your podcast. Mm-hmm. He was like, he had one viral moment though, but he was like, I don't think people understood and heard the full thing. And I was like, well, what was the viral moment? He was like, he compared Jesus on a cross to a strip on a pole. Not quite. And he was like, Lord, have <laughs> that's what he told me. He was, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, but, yeah. But he was yeah, like, yeah. he was like, but people didn't hear the whole thing. Yeah. At the end, they will get it, but I don't think people got it. So you got to ask them to, to clarify that. So yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. So you um, said Jesus was a stripper. Yeah, I said the only uh, the only stripper that I love is Jesus. Like that's that's the only stripper only that I love. Stri- okay, explain. So so Jesus came out of heaven to put on humanity. He took off glory mm-hmm. to put on divinity. Then mm-hmm. he was stripped butt naked and died on a tree. Mm-hmm. So the only th- that's why I said the only stripper that I love is Jesus. Mm-hmm. So people did take it out of context, and it was a viral moment. Um, the people in the room understood it. There was a lot of people that felt like. Um, it was inappropriate or tasteless. That's their opinion. I know the people I was talking to. I know that anytime p- people are doing this in a church service, 
I think they know <laughs> the context of stripper and what I meant mm -hmm. when I made the statement. So yeah, I, I guess what, what I, I would say: did, did Jesus strip, or was or was he stripped? He stripped and was stripped okay. because he took off glory. He stripped himself of that. Like right. everything that made him uh, God and divine, he took that off mm -hmm. so that he could live and dwell among us. He's mm -hmm. fully God and fully man, but he took off that glory side of him so that he could relate to us. Do you, do you think you have to start at the bottom to accomplish true success? Because I mean, a lot of us, especially black people in this country, we don't have a choice. Yeah, for sure. But I mean, for those of us who are breaking generational curses. Absolutely. You, you know, creating better foundations for our kids to start from. Do you feel like you have to start from the bottom? Yeah, I think, uh, I know my, if we talk about the bottom as like a, a, a spot, mm -hmm. um, I don't think everybody has to start from there. But mentality wise, I believe it's good to have humility and think of yourself not more highly than you really are. My mm -hmm. mom made a dope statement to me years ago. She said, no matter how high you go, Tim, just remember, you're still gonna be at the feet of Jesus. That's right. So when you think about that, when you think about the success that you all have attained, the success that a lot of us have attained, yeah, my, my kids, I was born in the hood. My kids are straight up upper middle class black kids. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to start from where I started from, no. but I still want them to have that mentality to be humble, to not walk around like they're arrogant, to not walk around like they are better than anybody else, and to give back to the people um, uh, that they see that are less fortunate. Well, that's and regardless. I, I think that's anybody, no matter how much money you make, sure. that's what you want for your kids. That's what we want. Yeah. And that's the mentality that I teach in that book. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. guess we're all starting at ground zero, right? Because even if you create a great foundation for your kids, they still have to go out there on their journey. Facts. So they're still starting at absolutely. zero. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, that's 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 my mentality for it. Talk to us about chapter four, the the off of a maybe. What is what is off of a maybe? Yeah, bro. So um, it's one of, one of my favorite chapters in the book because... Jesus died for you, for you, for everybody in this room, everybody in the world, mm. off of a maybe. Like, first of all, if I was Jesus, I would you you wouldn't have no choice but to serve me. If I die for you, you're go <laughs> nigga, Word you're up. going yeah, to yeah, serve yeah, me. Yeah, like, yeah, there's yeah, not yeah, gonna yeah. be no yeah, 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 like, yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna give you free will, envy. You got a choice. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna haunt you. Like, I'm gonna be on your neck every day until you like realize I, I poured out blood for you. Mm -hmm. uh, but Jesus went to the cross knowing that some people are still not gonna accept him, that some people are still gonna mock him, that some people are still gonna act like he didn't do what he did. And to me, that's an extravagant gesture to die for somebody knowing they might do it and they might not, but I love them so much I'm gonna do it anyway. And hopefully they get the revelation of it. Mm. Now, you, you say that you're a, a disruptor Yo. when it comes to the church. Why, why do you think churches need some disruptive sometimes, some disruptive behavior, I should say? Yeah, because um, the, the, the word I use is incongruent. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm very, I, I'm not, I stop shy of, of calling people hypocrites and stuff like that because I got to see you way up close for that. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of incongruencies in the church that have caused a lot of people to become disenfranchised with it. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm squarely Generation X, right? I was born in 1975, right? Mm -hmm. So so reality TV was born on our watch. Mm -hmm. Like Real World 1, Pedro Puck, that's real, that's that was real. on our watch, mm -hmm. right? So so when so move forward from that, we went from scripted series and television to like reality TV. Mm -hmm. Put these niggas in a room, give them something to drink, and then let's see what happens, right? So for so when you get to church, like you, you went Monday through Saturday unscripted, like doing life with your friends and family, and you get to church and it's like very scripted. Scripted to the point that people are like, I don't, I don't even know if this dude is like for real. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just, I'm just asking the church to look at themselves. I, I was a lead pastor for seven years, love doing it. Um, but I'm asking the church to like look at themselves mm -hmm. and like where you, wherever you see those incongruencies, fix those so that people won't be walking away thinking, yeah, I, I couldn't feel, dude. I couldn't feel that girl because it just seemed like something was off. We know some things about them in the street that, you, you know, don't match with what they preaching on Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we ain't in a world 20 years ago where you could just suppress stuff in the news. Stuff come out now. Mm -hmm. Streets know. You know what I mean? And it's like, oh, you go to that church? Oh, we know your pastor. 
You know what I mean? So those incongruencies need to be addressed. Let's I'm wondering, about, um, you know, in, in the in the church, they always say, come as you are. Yep. When I'm starting to notice, it's a lot of pastors and preachers coming as they are. Mm -hmm. And I wonder how ultimately in the long run, you know, number one, how will it be received and how will that impact what's happening in the church? Because, you know, I, you know, you, you, you say the N word, I, you know, what I don't, it don't bother me. Yeah. Like, See pastors doing the swag surfing in the church. None of that bothers me. Yeah. You know, for, for all the reasons that you're talking about. I know none of us are perfect. And yeah, for sure. That's if that's who you are, that's who you are. Yeah. What do you ultimately think of, of, about pastors coming as they are? Yeah, I'm glad you actually brought that up. Mm -hmm. Like, like the church has said historically for decades, come as you are. When the truth is, come until you come in, come until we find out. That's the way it ultimately plays out. Come we, until we, we find out. Yeah, come until we find out. Like, oh, okay. we invite you in. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Come ooh, as you are. Ooh, ooh, and then as soon as okay, we okay. find out, it's like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. canceled. I got you. Oh, you got to go. Mm -hmm. oh, and I'm like, is what we just found out about this individual much different than what we find out about the individuals in the Bible? Now, pastors are held to a higher standard. I was a lead pastor for seven years. There's no way I could get caught up in an affair mm -hmm. and keep my position. For in the same way that if y'all did something on this show mm -hmm. that was outside of the bounds of your you, you know overseers, they would they would have to let y'all go. I don't like the term overseers. Yeah, that, yeah, that but <laughs> kind of like slaves or they overseers. Uh, uh, yeah, bosses, exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah. Higher executives, ups, yeah. higher ups, Jesus whatever Christ. one, right? right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I didn't know. I didn't know overseer was synonymous with slave. <laughs> That's owner. what it felt like. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, didn't mean to trigger y'all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but 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 yeah, like so so pastors are held at a higher standard mm -hmm. and should be mm -hmm. right in the same way. Anybody that has an elevated office should be held to a higher standard. But for the average person that comes to church, people are on a journey. They are on a spectrum. They are trying to work this out. And you can't ask somebody that's been very deep in sin for years and years and years mm -hmm. to have this Thanos snap change mm. in a week. Like it's not gonna happen. Like mm -hmm. going to growth track for four weeks is not gonna make my situation change that I've been in for 50 years. Mm -hmm. That's real. So trying to help people to understand that this is a journey and that it's not like a instantaneous change. You, your soul is saved at the moment you confess Jesus Christ as Lord. Mm -hmm. But there's a process to get your mind and your body to match where your soul and your spirit is. So, so let's, let's, let's discuss that, right? So you yep. talk that, um, Preachers are held on a different level, a mm -hmm. different standard. Yes, sir. Do you think they should be held on a different standard, right? Because we always talk about, you know, there's no man perfect and, yeah. and no man is this, no man is that. But, you know, this is kind of where I have a little bit of a, a, a problem. It's like you can't preach something all day. Mm -hmm. And then when you finish preaching at five o'clock, you live the total opposite life. This is what I'm saying. And then it doesn't feel like it's coming from a real place. It's coming feel like it's coming from a financial place. I mm -hmm. feel like it's coming from a business place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's break that down. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, so this is what I'm talking about, right? Like, again, anybody in an elevated position is held to a higher standard. If you, ha if you have somebody that's a chief of police, you do not expect them to get crack at 6 p.m. after right. they got off at 5. Correct. If you, if, if you got a doctor uh, uh, that's doing brain surgeries, you don't expect them to also be terminating people's lives doing it with the same practice, right? So in the same way with preachers, it's like you can't be telling everybody, don't do this, don't do that, don't do the other, and you get off of work, right? And you got a, a whole side chick on the side, right? You got three babies, mamas, they on the third through fifth rows, and your wife got on a big old hat that's not stylish. She's just trying to cover her face because she's looking at you like, wow. why am I even here? Wow. You know what I'm saying? So... Man. So so there is a standard. The Bible talks about that standard. The scriptures talk about the fact that teachers are going to be held at a higher accountability uh, level, that their, their, their responsibility and, and that way, therefore, not many of it, you should even be teachers because of what kind of consequences you'll have if you're leading people astray. So those are the incongruencies I'm talking about. Like, And what we do in the basement is we give people a safe space to give us the gift of their vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And when people have an opportunity to be vulnerable, like that's when they can actually heal from the stuff they go through. I'm starting to realize something. Like I always say that uh, the language of politics is dead. 
Mm. Um, I feel like that's something that, you know, somebody like a Donald Trump just destroyed. Yep. Like politics, politicians don't have to talk like politicians if they don't want to. Facts. I'm starting to realize that about pastors and preachers now. Yeah. Y'all don't have to talk about pastors. Y'all don't have to talk like pastors and preachers if you don't want to. Yeah. Well, well, um, when I was a pastor, so a lot of people have uh, really had a problem with me since we started our podcast. Mm -hmm. Because on the podcast, I am sitting down on a couch in my house having conversations with people. Mm -hmm. That's completely different than if I was standing up preaching. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that um, the pulpit is the place to talk like you're having a conversation on your couch. So you don't use the N-word in the pulpit? No. Okay, okay That would okay. be crazy. Okay, got like, it, got like, it. The, the, I didn't know. I didn't, yeah, yeah, okay, for sure, for sure, yeah. The, the, the pulpit for My me... My nigga Jesus. Yeah, that would be, <laughs> yeah, that would be wild, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, like um, the pulpit for me is, a, is akin to a State of the Union address, right? Like, and so you're talking to nations. Right. And you're trying to give them this good news about the gospel. Mm -hmm. But when I'm a, when I'm on my couch, I'm talking like the way I talk. I don't have to code switch sure. and won't. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, uh, but when people think uh, when people think that, oh, we caught you talking in a way you shouldn't talk like it's I've always talked like this. Yeah, And you're on your podcast with cameras rolling. I know. What yeah, <laughs> I know yeah, you yeah. didn't catch me doing anything. Yeah, you didn't catch yeah. me doing <laughs> anyway. And this is but this is the incongruency I'm trying to help uh, people in the church like uh, solve is that. If, a, if your pastor drinks wine, why make him hide it? Because it might be a stumbling block to you. Mm -hmm. The Bible says don't get drunk with wine. It doesn't say don't drink, mm -hmm. right? So like just just getting rid of like the stuff that people have made uh, with, Jewish, with Jewish rabbis called fences mm -hmm. around the actual commandments mm -hmm. and just letting people like understand that like, yo, everything ain't a sin. But if it's your conviction mm -hmm. and it's for something for something that you shouldn't be doing, then you shouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. But to say that it's a sin, that's not true. Yeah, because Jesus turned water to water to wine. What First miracle. What you think he did? What y'all think y'all did with the wine? <laughs> and, that, and and they drank it. <laughs> that's right. And yeah. this was good. This was good stuff too. And, and you know, the reason I, I talked about the language of uh, you know, I guess pastoring is dead because you know we had Ty Tribute up here. Yep. And you know, Ty's, that's my homie. Ty's a good brother. You know, he said that uh, the church was whack, but that mm -hmm. everybody took that line. Yeah. The church is whack, but what he was saying was the church should be about the people, but the church makes the people about the church. They're not serving and loving the people. So right. his, his initial statement was, man, the church is whack, yeah. but here is the reasons why. Yeah, and but nobody, y'all know this, nobody yeah. listens to the whole thing for context yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah. The 90 second soundbite is the whole message now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the message for you, it's the message for you, it's the message for me. Nobody mm -hmm. goes, Oh, I wonder what Charlemagne was talking about. Let me go listen to the. I wonder what DJ Envy meant. Mm -hmm. Let me go listen to the whole thing. Nah, mm -hmm. the, your ninety seconds is the whole conversation. Mm -hmm. Ty Tribbett is the lead pastor of a church in Orlando. Mm -hmm. So if the nigga said the church was whack, he talking about himself, mm -hmm. right? That's he right. would be saying his church is That's whack. Right. That's not what he was saying. Mm -hmm. But nobody listens for the period anymore. They just listen to the comma, and that's that's just the nature of social media right now. And, and what do you think? What did you think about his comments? Do you agree? You yeah, disagree? of course I agree. Okay. Now, because I know he wasn't generalizing, but he's talking about specific churches. Mm -hmm. What I love is that he didn't name them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the best way to counteract a whack church is to have a real one. Mm. I ain't got a name. Like y'all ain't got to get up here and talk about the other stations. Like don't mm -hmm. listen to the other stations. Mm -hmm. We the best. Mm -hmm. Just be the best and everybody will know that the rest ain't worth listening to. That's real. And mm -hmm. so... I, when I was a pastor, it was the same thing. It was like, let me just teach the Bible. I know there's some whack teaching out here. There's some whack preachers out here. The best thing I can do is be authentic in the way that I lead, authentic and and in the way that I teach scripture, staying true to scripture, and then letting everybody else go figure out when they listen to somebody else. Like, yeah, nah, that ain't that ain't what I get. I get better food at home. You think the business of church has uh, hurt the quote unquote church where you see pastors getting arrested you see so many things going on Ooh. you think that's hurt church so much where people don't know if they can actually trust a preacher pastor or church yeah for sure like like um that that's that's one thing that that's part of the incongruence that really breaks my heart right is that it's the same thing with with uh police officers right my mother worked for the LAPD for 30 years i went to school studied to be um uh, a homicide detective that's what i wanted to do with my whole life and so when you see what happens to George Floyd and what happens uh, to so many people across this nations. And they, then they say all police are whack. It's like, well, that's not true. Right. Mm -hmm. In the same way, 
you see a pastor get arrested, you see a pastor get exposed for this, that, and the other, and then it's like, all oh, pastors are like this, and it's like, it's not true. My, w- w- the file I call on the people that are like, that's why I don't go to church. I'm like, y'all niggas got food poisoning before and still, and still went back out to eat. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Nobody said, I'm home cooked meals from now on. You know what I'm saying? I'll never go out. I'm never doing Uber Eats again. Never right. go have a DoorDash. No, you just don't F with that Chinese food place no more. But don't say you're going to write off all restaurants. Right. So in the same way, it's like, don't say all churches hurt you. That one did. Mm-hmm. That one on the corner. So go find another one. Right. And if you really got hurt, get, you know, go to therapy, get over that little hurt, and then move around. Now, did you really, I'm just going back to the cursing one more time. Did you tell people you were going to stop cursing? Because you got backlash from the church? No, no, no. Uh, not from backlash from the church. Okay. I did not. First of all, l- l- let me, let me, let me um, give you context. I use strong language on a total of four pods. Total. Okay. The way they replay that thing, you would think I was Dave Chappelle-ing every episode of The Basement <laughs> I ever did. Yeah, like, yeah, what's yeah, up, yeah. mother effers? You know, yeah, welcome yeah, to yeah, The yeah, Basement. Yeah. That wasn't the case. Um, I talked to a dear friend of mine who, who I appreciate his church, and he had a lot of his uh, congregants that were concerned that I use strong language on my podcast, that they listen to the podcast and they attend this person's church. After I finished talking to him, I was like, bro, it ain't that serious. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want you in your in, in your welcome center answering questions about your friend who has a podcast. Mm-hmm. So I'm not dying on that hill. And because I still preach for a few of my friends in churches, I just decided to back off from using strong language on the mic. That wasn't even far enough for the people that don't like me mm-hmm. oh, because they want me to say it's a sin. It's it might be your conviction. It's not a sin. Mm-hmm. I've never come close to using it in the pulpit. We could talk about some preachers that do, mm-hmm. right, and have. They're on church milk. Um, but I'm not, it ain't that serious to me. The it ain't Bi- that no, serious to me. The Bible says curse the devil, though. <laughs> well, well, okay, so so let's let's talk about the difference between cursing and cussing. These are not the same thing. Break it down for me. A curse, C U R S. You mean like roots, voodoo? That's what that is? Yeah, like, like cursing is that's a real thing like cursing is is scriptural cussing cussing is a matter of language and who won the last war but i thought witchcraft ain't supposed to be in part of this either though no witchcraft is definitely a sin yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. scripture is clear okay. on that so curse when you say curse the devil how do you curse the devil c-u-r-s-e because i say fuck satan in a minute <laughs> I, I've been saying, I literally, that's, that's been an affirmation of mine all my life. <laughs> Whenever I get my anxiety attacks when I was a child, I used to say, I love Jehovah God I grew up with Jehovah Witness. Yeah. I love Jehovah God and his son Jesus Christ. I love Jehovah God and his son Jesus Christ. I love Jehovah God and his son Jesus Christ. Fuck Satan, fuck Satan, fuck Satan. Yeah. I, I've been saying that since I was a child. Yeah. Sounds like he cursed How was that wrong? Cursing the devil curse, the devil. <laughs> well, I, I, I it's you said that as a kid? Curse? Yes. As a I, child in my brain, I would say said, that. Wow. For, first of all, I, I, I'm trying to figure out where the scripture is that actually says curse the devil. I know. I might have just made that yeah, up. I think you did. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like, I'm, like, I'm running a reference yeah, in my yeah. head. I'm like, that don't even sound familiar. Like, I don't even remember that verse. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but w- what I will say, though, is that um, word curses are a real thing. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, people, again, have had issue with my strong language. Uh, I'm not here to defend it. Or, again, you, their convictions are different from mine. No sense in going around the bush. What I will mm-hmm. say, though, is I've had more hurt at the hands of people in church that have never used a curse word, mm. but have gossiped, lied, backbitten, spread rumors, spread lies. That's what scripture talks about when it says, um, you, you know, don't use filthy communication. It's talking about those types of things. So for me, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to just be authentic and true to, to who I am and the people that um, I feel like I'm called to. Mm. You, you also said something too along the lines of uh, greatness is about perspective, not position. For sure, bro. Okay. Like, like we, we got to stop acting like greatness is a number. Mm-hmm. Like, because most people don't even, most people are not even content with their lives until they feel like they hit a certain measurement. I'm cool with people having goals, mm-hmm. but what if you don't reach them for whatever reason, right? Like we, um, there's a study that some psychologists did years ago about o- Olympic medalists, mm-hmm. right? Gold medalists, um, uh, they found were the most depressed out of the three mm-hmm. because they already 
reach their goal. They're 22 years old mm-hmm. at the at the at the peak of their physical pokertude and 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 success. They've already got gold. They're 22 years old. It's downhill from here. They're depressed. Mm. Silver lives with the most regret. Silver medalists are like, damn it, I was two milliseconds away from gold. Mm. So they live with the most regret. Guess who the happiest is? Bronze. Bronze. Why? Them nigga bronze is like, at least I made a medal. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> least, least, least I wasn't fourth. You know what I'm saying? So they be they be on there. They be biting the metal. You know what I mean? Go be crying because they like, what, do I just I just need to get another gold there, right? Uh, Silver is sitting there like kind of fuming. Bronze is waving at everybody. Damn, well, I'm coming home with a medal. Mm-hmm. And so if, if you get gold, act like bronze. If you get silver, act like bronze. If you get bronze, be bronze, right? Like, like I, I feel like my life is great right now. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't feel like, oh my goodness, I've made it here and now I'm somebody. Mm-hmm. I was somebody if y'all never knew me. I was somebody when Juliet found I was somebody when Jesus found me. So, so I've been content at every state I'm in. All the rest of this is cake, it's icing, it's cherries. That's it. I think that's the most important thing, you know, just being grateful wherever you are. Yeah, that's for right. sure. You know, and 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 I try to tell. It's funny. I was just having this conversation with somebody last night. Um, I saw some. I I, I heard a story about someone not being happy for someone. Meaning, mm-hmm. like, they're a person who's trying to figure some things out, but somebody else that we know had some had some real success, and you know, they had a party to celebrate the success, and the person was like they didn't want to go to the party because mm. it, it makes them feel mm. down. Mm. And I'm just like, if you can't find joy in somebody else's success, you'll never find any success of your own. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I, I would I would have told that person, go to the party and throw up a little in your mouth. <laughs> make you work harder. <laughs> yeah, go throw up a little bit in your mouth and, 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 and like feel that. You know what I'm saying? Like get over whatever is in you to compare yourself to them. And and sometimes the sometimes the only way around a test is straight through it. Mm. Like and and this is what dying to your flesh is all about, right? Mm. Like a dead man can't be tempted. I just lost my hero on uh, February twenty fourth. Your father condolences. Thank yeah. you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, right that, before the book came out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, three days mercy. before the book came out, it's my like I won the human ladder, lottery when it came to daddies. Okay, mm-hmm. and um, how old was he? If you don't mind me asking, he was seventy four. Okay, yeah. Um, his birthday w- is in May. Would have been married to mommy for 50 years in May. Um, but he died. And so I-, I was there on the day he died. And Was he sick or something? Yeah, he, yeah, it was, right. dude, it was so whack, bro. Like, it was rude, actually. Like, he, he, he went into the hospital on the 7th of February. I'm, I'm sorry, the 7th of January. And he was dead on the 24th of February. So seven weeks. Wow. And it kind of came out of nowhere, and I'm still kind of reeling from that. Um, but I was there when there was, like, I'm looking at my dad with no more life in his body. Mm. And I'm thinking about the pain he was in, the suffering that he had. Um, he had diabetes. But on that day, with no life in his body, with diabetes, I could have put a stack of pancakes in front of him with two Snickers bars on the side. Dead man can't be tempted. So the, the reason why I say go throw up in your mouth a little bit, if you're throwing up, that means there's something still on the inside of you that needs to die. Wow. And you need to wow. stay in there until you realize, uh, oh, that's dead in me now. This, this don't even bother me no more. Dead man can't be tempted. This is why Christ calls for us to crucify our flesh with its affections and its lust. You know you dead to something when it don't bother you no more. So you, you think those are natural emotions, the jealousy, the envy that oh, you Oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Fear, um, all that stuff, that's that's a part of being human. So it's not like I, the dude don't take an L for, or, or the girl, don't they don't take an L for feeling the emotion. Mm-hmm. You, got, you take an L when you don't know what to do with it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That stuff has to be processed. That stuff have to, has to be metabolized. And you have to be curious. This is why I tell everybody to go to therapy. You, you got to be curious enough uh, to go find out why it's bothering you. That's right. It ain't the other person's fault. That's right. You know what I'm saying? The other person could have triggered you. Go figure out why why you're bothered. Right. Don't go slap them. I guess I process it different just because 
you know, when I see people around me obtain success, it just lets me know I'm, I'm, I'm in line. Yeah, bro. I'm in line. For sure. The fact that you're even in proximity. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Right. It'd be different if you was watching, you seeing it on Instagram, and you, mm -hmm. but you could be at the person's house right. celebrating with them. That's right. I go find out what the cheat code is. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, how, yeah. How are you uh, handling losing your father while promoting this book? Whew. Um, bro, uh, I, I, I think um, it's it's so disorienting. Like when you've had like a great dad or a great parent um, and their voice is gone, it is it's so disorienting. Like I, I, I feel like I'm having this kind of this um, uh, phantom itch. Uh, I've heard that people that, loo that lose a limb will wake up in the middle of the night, like say mm -hmm. they lost their leg and they go to scratch their leg, but it ain't there. Mm -hmm. The nerve endings are still sitting the signal, but the limb ain't there no more. I, I talked to my dad so much when I traveled that um, like he's the first call I want to make. Mm -hmm. And, uh, can't make the call. Yeah. So, have you done that? Have you picked up the phone and mm -mm. dialed and be like, "Oh, nah. shoot, I forgot." I paid their phone bill, mm -hmm. so I, my mom said um, she was just trying to be sweet. You're like, "Baby, you know, you can disconnect Daddy's phone, and you don't have to pay that bill." Like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Wow. Because if I, I got six years worth of his voicemails. I got so many hours of my mom and dad having conversations because they get to talking about like civil rights and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. drinking from colored water fountains and I would mm -hmm. just hit record and slide the phone on the table. They don't know the difference. Um, so I have his voice. I just, I ain't ready yet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just not ready to hear it yet. Have you taken the proper time out for your mental health? Like, Oh know? dude, this is happening real time. Real time. So, so, so in the, in the 28 years that I've been a believer in Jesus, I've been in therapy for 26. Amazing. Cause I realized after like the first two years of like living for Jesus, like altar calls, they only open up a can of worms. Like they ain't addressing nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, some people have some experiences at the altar that are amazing. That wasn't mine. So I had to go really process mine. I had sexual trauma at the age of eight. Uh, porn addiction introduced at 12, highly promiscuous by my late teens. So I had a lot of stuff to unpack. And, you know, all of that wasn't going to be unpacked at the altar in a 15 minute prayer. So therapy has been a huge component to my life. And, like, so doing my grief work um, has been a big part of this. And my life coach ta taught me how to do my grief work very well. So I'm grieving and touring. Gotcha. Like, I'm not like, compartmentalizing that like I gotta be strong and go do this tour like I'm crying on tour right. and I, I happen to have the type of life now and career if you want to even call it that where I don't have to I don't have to compartmentalize that mm -hmm. so even our dwellers at, as they are so affectionately called shout out to all the dwellers out there wherever y'all watching mm -hmm. um, um, they've been giving us condolences cards Carrot cake. That was me and my dad's favorite. They they've been really kind to us. So no, I don't have to hide that. I've I've just, I've, I've been grieving and moving. I believe in God and therapy. So that's incredible yeah, to hear for sure. Um, in part two of your book, you say religion doesn't work. Yeah, that's going to upset some church folks. They'll be alright. <laughs> break, break, <laughs> break, right. break that down. Break that down. Yeah. So so um, religion doesn't work, and the reason why religion doesn't work is because um you have to have a relationship in order to make something religious, right? Um, Juliet and I have been together 26 years. I've been married to her for 25. Mm -hmm. Date nights are on Fridays. Love having date nights with my wife. Um, I'm religious about the date night on Friday because of the relationship I have with Juliet. Mm -hmm. Now, if she got sick one night, uh, one Friday night and couldn't go to the movies with me and I go to the movies anyway, now my religion is empty because I'm not even doing it with the person I have relationship with anymore. So when I talk about religion doesn't work in that chapter, what I'm talking about is the fact that people that are still doing church, regardless of God there or not, regardless if Jesus is showing up or not, regardless if they want a relationship with him or not, they just check in a box. That type of religion doesn't work. Like the people that think I'm going to go to church on Sunday, check a box, and then just live ratchet uh, Monday through Saturday, that 
that religion does not work. You should just stop. Like, mm -hmm. don't go to church no more. Mm -hmm. I tell people that all the time. Do you know you don't have to be here? Like, you really don't have to come here if you don't want to. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I love riding with people in, in a church context that really believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and God raised him from the dead. But for the people that are in there, that's just like, yeah, I go to church because that's what I do. But I'm still doing everything else. It's like, go to the club, nigga. Like, save the, right. go to club Saturday night and sleep in on Sunday. Don't do this to you or him because you don't even care. Mm -hmm. So that's what I mean by that. What's one main, one main message that you hope people get from reading this book versus listening to your podcast? The book is the manual, bro. Like, okay. so the book, Charlemagne, is like, that, that's where people metabolize the whole basement philosophy. Mm -hmm. And so m my hope and prayer when they read the book is that the world will literally be t turned upside down with the message of love and hope of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and that they will spend the rest of their life trying to upset others. I talk about being a do-gooder in that book all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, the world is already cynical. And if we could just show our good deeds to people we could soften the hearts of both men and women and give them a proper perspective on a loving God. Cause he really is loving. Like he loved the world so much. He gave his son mm -hmm. before we even knew to ask for him. Mm -hmm. He gave. So to give people that hope, that's what I hope they metabolize in the book and that they actually live out. Right. Yeah. Well, welcome to the basement and upside right. down God to greatness is out right now. And we appreciate you for joining us, brother. Appreciate you, man. Yeah, Absolutely. Go get it's Tim, Tim Ross. Ross' book. Check out his podcast. That's Thank right. you for coming, brother. Thank you, man. It's Tim Ross. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.